then one of the first things you need to have done in this whole process is your resume. Um, so for those of you that have your resume together already, that's fantastic. I would definitely recommend you have somebody review it. Um, it's always good to have a second set of eyes on your resume. But for those of you that don't have a resume or maybe want to tweak your resume or update it, um, we'll go through some good tips um, and information that you should include here. So you always want to have your, you know, your name at the top, your contact information. It's not necessary to have an actual address, uh, physical address where you live. It's better to have a city and state only. Um, and maybe you're thinking about moving. So maybe you want to put that city and state, or maybe you have a city and state where you're in school and then your home residence. Um, obviously, there's a lot of jobs that are remote or hybrid now, and it maybe doesn't matter so much where you're located, but I always find it helpful to at least have an idea of where people are located when I'm reviewing resumes. So city and state are enough. Your email, your cell phone, your LinkedIn link, um, that's all really important. And then getting into the resume itself, if you are a recent graduate or you are still in school, graduate school or undergrad, wherever you may be in your education journey, you want to put that in reverse chronological order. Chronological order. So you want to have your graduate school listed first and then below that your bachelor's. And what's important here is that, you know, if you do have a solid GPA, that's great, but really only include it if it's a 4.0 or higher. I mean, and, and always put your expected graduation date or the date of graduation. Month and year is perfectly fine. Um, if, you know, it's been a long time since you've graduated, it's not necessary to include the year. But for those of you that are recent grads or soon to be recent grads, include the expected graduation date. The other thing that's important, um, obviously, what sort of degree you're getting, majors, minors, but any awards that you've uh, received at school or for a particular area, or maybe like critical coursework that you've taken that might pertain to the job that you're looking for, um, any leadership activities that pertain to your education or certifications that you might have obtained, um, all you know under the education area or education slash prof professional development could be um, another header for that section. Um, Another important area on your resume is the core skills or technical skills or areas of expertise. And you may not be an expert in everything that you want to do. So a good way to say this is to say um, core skills and areas of interest um, versus areas of expertise or technical skills and areas of interest if you are not an expert yet in those areas. So let's say you're interested in electrical engineering, but you just have only taken a couple classes. You may just wanna list electrical engineering under this section, but call it areas of interest. Um, so keywords are really important. Um, these would be things that you do have skills and experience with or things that you're interested in. And again, these are things that pertain to you. So, you know, the best thing to do is just Google some, you know, keywords for, or look up job um, postings for a particular, or internship postings that you might be interested in and see what kind of keywords are listed in those, in those postings. It might say, you know, they're looking for somebody who's really good with detail or great with spreadsheets or has a degree in electrical engineering or whatever it may be. And that's a good place to pull some of that information or some of those words from, um, in addition to, you know, just Googling and, you know, Googling whatever the, the job is that you want. Um, and, and that'll probably help you too. Um, in addition to going back to career services, I'm sure they would have lots of resources around that as well. Um, okay, moving right along, your work or internship experience is really important. Again, chron reverse chronological order. So the most recent should go first, and you're going to list the name of the organization. You're going to list the title of the job that you held. I think it's helpful to have a little blurb, no more than a sentence, about what the company does that you worked for or the organization that you had that job or internship with. Um, a short, short summary that explains, you know, who the company is. And then in terms of um, dates, you want to include just the years 
So let's say you had an internship last summer and the summer before at the same place. You would just say summer 2020 and 2021 and include that next to the organization. Um, months are not necessary. Even if you've been somewhere only three, four, five, six months, or it was just a summer job, it's less is more as you're writing the resume. So just putting summer in the year is perfectly acceptable. Um, and then how, you know, how you describe what you did, how do you do that? What did you do in, at your internship or at your job, whatever the job may be? So we're going to look at these CAR statements. So CAR stands for challenge, action, and result. So every um, job that you have, you should have at least two to three bullets that describe what you did at that company, in that internship, at that job. So you're going to set the context, you know, what challenge did you overcome? What was the situation? Then you're going to use action verbs that begin each phrase. So what action did you take to resolve the problem? And then define the challenge or define the situation. And <clears throat> below I've included a few examples that explain this. So um, the first one, a car statement, would be administered a million dollar budget and negotiated maintenance contracts with outside agencies in support of 60 million worth of equipment. Um, Granted, a lot of you may not have that kind of experience yet, but it gives you an idea of what a car statement is and how it should be written. Another example below is redesign the packaging of a leading computer hardware company, resulting in 1 million annual cost savings and a 50% reduction in air pollutants. So one of the big things here, and one of the things I like to see in hiring managers and recruiters like to see on resumes is numbers. So if you're able to quantify something, that's fantastic. If you, maybe your job was data entry and you were entering information into a system, talk about how much um, information you entered or did you meet the goals or the quota or the requirements of that position or were you able to save the company money in some you know, way, shape or form? How much did you save? Um, did you have some sort of specific goal or achievement that um, you could quantify and explain. So that's real important. So you can see that these car statements, you know, do have do quantify, which is is helpful to somebody reading it. And you can also see that they're short. It's not a long run-on sentence. It's short to the point. You want to make things very easy for the person reading your resume. You want it to be straightforward and to the point. Um, okay. So that is um, the first part of the resume. Then you also wanna have volunteer experience. And if you don't have volunteer experience, that's okay. But if you do, that's even better. If you've volunteered anywhere um, while you've been in school, I would include that, whether it pertains to your area of, um, you know, the job that you're looking for, the internship you're looking for, or, or if it doesn't, it just shows that you've, Give, that you give back, you spend your time doing something, contributing to an organization. Um, and so you want to lay that out just like you would the work or internship experience. You would list the organization, you would list the job title you held there uh, or volunteer title that you held there. Could just be volunteer, as simple as that. And a little bit about the organization and maybe two bullets about what you did there.